And listen to my story about a man named Jed. A poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food. And up through the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is. Black gold. Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kinfolk said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly Hills, that is. Swimming fools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbilly. Ted Clampett speaking. Good morning, Mr. Clampett. Are Granny and Ellie back from the hills? No, but they do any minute, and I sure will be glad to see them. Keeping a wild animal fed is quite a chore. <laughs> well, no, ma'am, I don't mean Jethro. <laughs> Ellie left me with his grizzly cub, but he goes after vittles a heap like Jethro. You ever burp a bear, Miss Jane? <laughs> burp a bear? Well, no, I... Oh, good morning, Chief. If that's a personal call, I'll leave 15 cents. <laughs> if you'd like me to come over and help, I have had some experience handling beasts. Well, that's real nice of Miss Jane, but uh, Cousin Bessie is helping with the other little critters. Jethro will be back from the airport with the women folk any time now. Well, if there's anything I can do... Get out of the way! Come here! Uh, I'm afraid I have to hang up now. Captain Bly wants me. <laughs> you called? Where's my morning newspaper? Well, Chief, I, I don't think you should see it. It will only upset you. What could upset me after what I've been through with those hillbillies? Jethro gets his induction notice. Jed buys him a tank. I have to be his tank crew. He dresses me up like Von Hindenburg and I get arrested, and I'm going to be upset by the morning paper! Gee, somebody in the bank will hear you. Oh, gosh. <laughs> this gets hot. I'll be ruined. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, soldiers never cry. It's so unfair. Jethro dressed up like General Patton and nobody even saw him. Now, Chief, it's all over. Jethro returned the tank and right now he's bringing Granny and Ellie home from the airport. Get me out of this thing. Granny, you busted my eardrum. Hush up, both of you. This is the last time I'm ever home. Females in my tank. Jethro, I thought you took that tank back to where you got it. I did, Uncle Jed. But when I seen the kind of respect the tank general gets, I had to buy it back. You should have seen him saluting me at the airport. Soldiers, sailors, Marines, Air Force. Granny and Ellie. In the tank. <laughs> Jed, fetch my medical bag. Are you hurt, Granny? No, it's for the general. I ain't hurt. I ain't down there yet. <laughs> now, Granny, Jethro's going in the army. Let's be easy on him. Jed, do you know what that boy put Ellie and me through? There ain't room in that thing for four. No, I am neither. Did you say four? Yeah, we brought you back a surprise. Come on, Pearl. Oh, Pearl, come with you. Well, that's what we call her. Come on, Pearl. I'll take you out back, Pearl. <laughs> we named the pig for Jethro's maw, because it was Pearl who gave it to us. Noisy little critter. That pig was the quietest female in the tank. You're asking for it. Watch out, civilian. You're talking to a four-star two-gun general. Take <laughs> these suitcases upstairs. Oh, I need me a aid. Ah, first aid is my turtle number. <laughs> I thought you said Jethro got rid of this thing. 
Well, that was my understanding. Listen, there's only one way to stop this foolishness. Jethro must be inducted now, today. But he hasn't had his physical. We'll pull strings. That nut might decide to win the Navy and Jed'll buy him a destroyer. <laughs> or the Air Force. And Jed might buy a B-52. What was that about me buying a B-52? <laughs> I was just wondering what you might buy me. I'm going to be 52. <laughs> oh, a birthday. What do you reckon he'd like, Miss Jean? He'd like to be 52. <laughs> Where's Ellie May? She's out back with the pig. Oh, is he still wearing that general's uniform? <laughs> <laughs> Well, speaking of Jethro, he can't go in the army until he has a physical examination. I'll get my medical bag and take care of it. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Bradley. <laughs> go in yonder and take your clothes off, Jethro. What for? I'm going on maneuvers. I'm going to give you a physical examination. A granny, he'll be examined by an army doctor. Oh, no. It was one of them goomers that killed Jed's cousin. An army doctor? High ranking one, too. General Peritonitis. General peritonitis isn't a doctor. <laughs> we found that out. <laughs> oh, take your clothes off, boy. Granny, the army doctor... Ain't gonna get their hands on that child. To them, he's just a number. But to me, he's Pearl's baby. And I promised her I'd take care of him. <laughs> now, go take your clothes off, baby. Granny, couldn't you let the army doctors examine me? They're too rough, sweetheart. These are the soft, gentle hands of a healer. These are about as soft as a gator's hide. <laughs> Take your clothes off. How's it look? Oh, Mr. Clavitt, don't waste your time polishing this silly little old tank. Maybe you're right. Jethro wants me to buy him a great big brand new one. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, please, Mr. Clampett, don't buy Jethro any more equipment. The Army will take care of that. They'll train him, outfit him, give him three square meals a day. They'll turn him into a real fighting man. They sure will if they cut him down to three meals a day. <laughs> Where is the boy? Well, Granny's giving him his physical examination. Now, that's another thing the Army will take care of. Not like Granny. <laughs> Temperature's normal. 142. 142 ain't normal. It is if your thermometer has been sterilized in boiling water. <laughs> Sit down. Cross your legs. I want to check your reflexes. <laughs> I got a busted knee. How long have you had that? <laughs> Now, sit down. It won't even let me in the army. All crippled up like this. Sit down before I give you another promotion. Promotion? That's right. I done give you one stripe. You want a buck for a corporal? <laughs> now, open your mouth and say, ah, uh, I want to look down your throat. Uh, 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 Head stealer, you're going to get a grilled gullet. Uh, <laughs> my, my, what an eating machine. I declare you've got more teeth than a garfish. Uh, What's the matter with your tongue, Jeff, bro? It's coated something terrible. That's what? <laughs> I declare you'll eat anything. Good thing there's a doctor in this thing. Now, hold still. I want to look in your ear. <laughs> Just as I suspected. What? What's the matter? N nothing, nothing. Some things the patient is better off not knowing. And now I'm going to take care of that busted knee. <laughs> Oh, wait a minute, Granny, wait, wait. Let the Army take care of them, huh? Now, you listen to me, boy. Your Uncle Jed is paying for everything else. The only thing I got to offer is my medical skill. <laughs> and that's going to be my contribution. Yeah, yeah, but what are you fixing to do with the saw? I'm going to cut you some splints. <laughs> oh. 
All right, boy, you can put your clothes on now. What'd you say, Granny? I said you can put your clothes back on! <laughs> well, how'd Jethro make out on his physical, Doctor? I passed him, Jed. But he's got some bad health habits he ought to break. Oh? What are they? Well, for one thing, he eats hot wax. Hot wax? He's got the roof of his mouth all sooty. He keeps bumping into things and busting his knee. Granny, <laughs> I can't get my general's uniform on over these splints. The splint stays on. Huh? I said leave them on! Doctor's orders! And if the knee gets the pain in too much, chew some of these gimp leaves. Oh, gee, Granny, I don't need any as well, boy. Mr. Drysdale huh? said... Mr. Drysdale said, wear your regular clothes to the army place. No uniform. Doggone. I ain't hardly in yet, and already I done been busted back to a civilian. Well, it seems hard to hear him. I put corks in his ear. What's first? So the wind won't blow through. <laughs> I'm telling you, Jed, if you was to finger his ears, blow into his mouth, you could play his head like an ocarina. <laughs> The young man Mr. Drysdale talked to you about is here, uh, Jethro Bodine. Oh, yes. He's the young man who's so anxious to join up. Yes, sir. By George, it's a pleasure to meet a boy like that. I'm getting sick to my stomach of those draft-dodging, card-burning hippies with their psychiatric cop-outs. They're turning our national symbol from an eagle into a chicken. <laughs> now, a boy comes to me who can't wait to serve his country. A boy who loves his country. A boy with blood in his veins instead of flowers in his hair. <laughs> What's he look like? Well, he's a big husky fellow, sir. He looks like he came right out of the hills. Another Sergeant York! Well, here's one boy that head shrinking down the hall isn't going to section eight. Bring him in. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Bodine, would you step in here, please? <laughs> that, a game leg, and he's ready to fight. You're a real patriot, my boy. Huh? Don't you hear, boy? What'd you say? Crippled. Hard of hearing, and he's ready to serve. <laughs> Can you see, boy? What? Don't you worry, lad. We'll mend that broken body. You've got the soul and the spirit of a hero. Lord Nelson had only one arm, but he saved England. <laughs> Process him, Sergeant. <laughs> yes, sir. Thanks, Mr. Come in. Good afternoon, Colonel. Well, what do you want, head shrinker? You're gonna psych out some more of those mother-hating hippies? No. No, I came in to talk to you about your hillbilly hero. Who? Oh? Superboy, Jethro Bodine. Look here, couch jockey. You're not gonna make one of those Freudian freaks out of this boy. He's got real soldier material. He's the new Sergeant York. You mean Sergeant Bilko. What? <laughs> I talked to some pretty clever draft dodgers in my day, but this boy is the greatest. Ah, you don't know what you're talking about. This boy wants to serve. You just haven't been able to communicate with him. He's hard of hearing, you know. Not anymore. I took the corks out of his ears. Corks? <laughs> right ear? Left ear. Oh, come on, Doc. No boy is that stupid. I didn't say he was stupid. In my book, he's a genius. We have had fellows come in here with their lawyers, their mothers, their teddy bears. This boy does it with corks and a limp. Of course he limps. She's got a stiff leg. Not anymore. I took off the phony splints. What do you mean, phony? That boy was in pain. Sure he was. His grandmother hit him in the knee with a hammer. He's also the one who put the corks in his ears. Well, that's understandable. His grandmother doesn't want him to leave home. He's the breadwinner. They're poor. Not anymore. They've got $60 million. Huh? They live in a mansion in Beverly Hills. Then why did he come in here dressed in those old clothes? I tell you, he is a genius. Get a load of this kid's reasoning. 
Now, he wants us to think that he's stupid enough to think that we're stupid enough to think that he is stupid enough. Ah, baloney, let me tell you something, psychiatrist. Jeffro Bodine came to me recommended personally by one of the most eminent citizens of Beverly Hills, president of the Commerce Bank. Uh, you mean Field Marshal von Hindenburg? <laughs> I don't understand this. It's all part of an elaborate plan to keep this boy out of the army. I tell you, it's brilliant. They have spared no expense. The brain that conceived this idea... Come in! Excuse me, sir. You too, sir. Can I join the army now and go to the front and commence to fighting? Really want to go, Jethro? Oh, yes, sir. There's just one thing. Sure would like to have me some vittles first. What? Uh, that's what the boy calls food, Colonel. Jethro, sit down, son. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you. Colonel, this is where he really showed his brilliance. He had me convinced that he was a compulsive eater. Let me show you something. What is this ink blot a picture of? The, the, the truth now. Well, it's a nude woman. Of course. <laughs> and, uh, yes? Same thing. That's right. They're all nudes. You know it, I know it, and Rorschach knows it. Get a load of this reaction. <clears throat> Jethro, what, uh, what is this? Oh, that's a picture of the ham hockey showed me a four. <laughs> and, uh, this? Hog jowls, pork chops, chitlins, possum shanks. Oh, man, ain't she a beauty? What is it, Jethro? Big, fat, old turkey hen. <laughs> okay, thank you, Jethro. Hey, can I join now? It won't cost you nothing. Uncle Jed's going to pay him away. Pay you away in the army? Well, yes, sir. Board, room, uniform, guns, tanks, airplanes, everything. I wonder if I could talk to this uncle of yours. Sure. You can talk to my whole family. I'd like that. I'll go fetch him right on down. Hey, and I can show you some of the things my Uncle Jed done bought for me, too. Hey, now you wait right here now, you hear? Don't worry, we will. <laughs> what do you suppose is keeping the boy? He's getting his family together over at Central Casting. Well, he could have a family, you know. Oh, mark my words. He will walk in here with the wildest so-called family you've ever seen. Ah, you're a cynic. I still say that that boy... Right in here, sir. Stand at ease, man. Jeffro? Well, how do you like it? Uncle Jed bought it for me. The whole family come with me. Are they loaded? Yeah. Granny's the only one that ever takes a nip. <laughs> Is that Granny? No, of course not. That's Cousin Bessie. Hey, that there's Ellie. Mrs. Granny? That there's Uncle Jed. It's my whole family. <laughs> Wild enough for you? You must be the rich uncle. Oh, I don't know what you could call me rich. I got about 60, 65 million. My lord, we just spent 10 million on our castle in England. Well, he ain't interested in our castle. I am. Do you have a real castle? Yes, sir. Big one? Yes, sir. With a moat and a drawbridge and uh, knights in armor? Yes, sir. And a dragon? Yes, sir. Knock it off. You must be Granny. That's right. You the one who put the caulks in Jeffro's ears? Yep. Was it to keep the boy out of the draft? Oh, it was to keep the draft out of the boy. Hey, you must be uh, Cousin Bessie. Well, no, sir, I I'm Cousin Ellie. This here's Cousin Bessie. I wanted to bring Pearl along, but Granny wouldn't let me. Well, she was too gamey with all of us closed Granny, up. He ain't interested in Pearl. I am. Uh, <clears throat> Pearl is Jethro's mother. I'll give you two to one. He fakes a hostility. Watch this. Jethro. Yes, sir? How do you feel about Pearl? What's there to feel? She's a pig. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible thing to say, boy. Well, it's true. She smelled bad enough when it was just the four of us in the tank. What tank? Oh, the tank my Uncle Jed bought me. Uh, you can see it. It's parked right out front, yonder. Well, 
These ways, Jed, they feed them good in the army. What you mean? Looky here. Ham hock. <laughs> pork jowls. <laughs> pork chops. <laughs> chitlins. <laughs> possum shanks. Well, are you ready to see it my way? Is he the draft dodging champion? I guess so. What do I do with him? You put him in intelligence. He's a genius. <laughs> Well, Jeffro, you can take your family back to the studio now. Uh, you'll hear from us. Am I going in the army? Oh, very likely, very likely. But first, we'll have to find just the right spot for a fellow with your brain. Yeah. You hear that? We're proud of you, boy. He's the first one in the family to graduate sixth grade. <laughs> well, uh, thanks for coming, folks. Goodbye now. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Uh, bye. You'll hear from us, Jeffro. Thank you. Oh, Jeffro. <laughs> You, you, you don't really hate Pearl, do you? Heck no. <laughs> I'm going home right now and give her a bucket of slop. <laughs> Playing it right to the finish. The girl, the ape, the grandmother, the millionaire uncle, all piling it in that little tank. There goes the general. A real, authentic genius. I sure hope the Army can draft him before the CIA hears about him. Au revoir, mon général. A better man than I am, Gunga Din. It's time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. They would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heaping helping of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. Y'all come back now, here. This has been a Filmways presentation.